I am very, very, very surprised. This is way faster than advertised, guys, especially the write speed. This write speed is supposed to be 2,000. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. This is a Pan Y brand of M.2 solid state drivers, the latest and the greatest. Everybody these M.2 drives, especially if you have an old computer, you want this. This is fast. This is the best and the greatest. This is XLR8 gaming and it's 500 gigabytes. And I'll tell you exactly why I have 500 gigabytes. It's because I'm comparing it against another brand, also 500 gigabytes. There's no reason for that except from the fact that the squeakers demanded that my, my previous videos, you gotta have the size drive and compare it with that has nothing to do with that you speed is speed it doesn't matter how big it is but I digress we're going to compare 500 versus 500 of a different brand which is like 970 Evo all right that out of the way this one is NVMe PCIe three times four what that means you got to have either M.2 slot that runs over PCI Express or you gotta have a free PCI Express slot on your computer that's at least four times. You can use eight times or 16 times. So yes, if you don't have an M.2 slot on your motherboard, you can still use this with this thing. This is just an adapter. This is a cheap adapter. You can insert it into this, put it on your computer, and there you have it. You have an M.2 drive. I will link it in the description if you're interested. I'm not saying you should necessarily buy the one I'm using, but check them out. There are definitely better ones. This is the one I got is cheap, but it works. We're going to use it as well. All right. This is 3,500 megabits per second read speeds. And the write speed is 2,000 megabits. Not megabytes, megabits read write speeds. I'm sorry. Compared to 970 EVO plus which is 3500 megabits per second read and it's supposed to be I think 34 also or 3500 write, read as well anyways yes this one is definitely going to be slower when it comes to writing but it's also cheaper drive we're going to test that so why would you care about write that's if you're installing something on your computer copying something over back and forth. You definitely want the right speed. But if you're just worried about load times, this, your games, your operating system, your Windows, all of that, you might want to just look at the read speed mostly. And this is why I'm comparing it to 970 EVO Plus because it has similar read speeds. We're going to test that, guys. Very, very important. Let's do a quick unboxing. We're going to get it to the all right, let's open it real quick just to show you. Then we're going to install it and then we're going to look at the benchmarks. Like I said, that's the most important thing. I will show you real quick how to install it as well into this adapter. Here it is. It's not rocket science. Let me do a little focus action for you guys. Here we go. The main thing to worry about is the orientation of this notch. This is an M key type of solid state drive. If you get the one that has two notches, that's the wrong one. That's just SATA. All right, so all I did was just kind of bend it here because it's kind of weird packaging, but it holds it in there. All right, very easy. Here's our adapter. We're just going to put it in there real quick. These adapters usually come with all the right hardware. All you got to do is just make sure it's aligned properly. Like so, let me give you a little close-up action, guys. You see the notch? There's another notch right there. There's another notch right there, so you just make sure that's aligned. Put it on an angle like this. Put it on an angle. You see how it kind of stays there like that? This is how laptop memory is installed as well. So make sure you put it on an angle like this first. Insert it like that. And all we're going to do is just lower it and screw it down. Okay? And here we have the little screw action. And we're just going to screw it on there. Ah, guys, I hate these little tiny screws. I'm trying to film this, and I'm standing behind the camera at the same time. 
Holy moly. Guacamole. Alright. It's not rocket science, guys. There it is. Just a little tight action and that's, that's it right there. And then if you get one of the adapters that has a heat sink on there, make sure you put the heat sink on there. This one didn't come with a heat sink. That's what I'm saying. You don't necessarily have to buy this one. I'll link it so you can just check it out. Just check it out. Don't buy it necessarily. You can. I don't care. Um, it's cheap. But see if you can get one that has a heat sink that you put over it. You just kind of insert it over here and then you put the C heat sink on because these things can't get hot. You know, I'm just trying to do you a favor and tell you right away. It's get hot. All right, guys, let's benchmark it. All right, guys, here we are inside of my computer. Uh, let's just see for a reference what kind of processor I have. So make sure that there's no bottleneck going on. Here's my i9-9900K. And uh, let me show you the disk drives. The first one is 970 EVO+. Plus. It shows up like that when you install Samsung drivers, which is normal. But it does say NVMe, so we know it's that one. And then we got PNY, which is the one we just talked about. This is the one we just installed. It's a CS3030. 3030. Uh, if you remember looking at the box, it said 3030. So if you want to confirm that, you can certainly do so. And of course, I have a couple more drives in here, which is just a regular 860 EVO solid state drive and then a regular standard 970 EVO IM.2, which is not the one we're testing. We're going to test the first two here. All right, this is how they look like inside of my computer. This is the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. And here is the one we just installed, PNY. Here it is. Same thing, essentially. Capacity is 465 gigabytes when it comes down to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these folders inside of EVO Plus and I'm going to put them inside PNY. And I'm going to test it with stuff inside of that. You know how many co comments I've seen on my previous videos when I did this type of comparison? When squeakers tell me that I am not doing this right. You can't have anything in there. You can't test the one that has stuff in it because it's slower. Like, really? Do you want... Do you calculate the speed of a drive when there is nothing in it? Do you want your drive to be fastest and when there is nothing in it? This is why I'm going to test it with stuff in it. All right, guys. So here we are. We're definitely going to do a crystal disk. We're going to do a benchmark. But I want to show you what I did here as a preparation for a real world example. And the first thing I did was actually make sure I'm recording with the camera outside of the computer. If I use screen recording software, that's actually going to impair the result, meaning it's going to change things. It's going to slow it down and they're not going to be accurate results. So I want to make sure that that's not happening. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a quick test of copying to itself. Here's the 970 EVO Plus. We're going to do copy paste. So what it's going to do is going to create same folders and files. We're going to do a side by side. All right. So far, it's it peaked up, and you can see that it slows down whenever it's reading smaller files. Let me just do it right here. It's Whenever it's reading smaller files, it slows down. Again, like I talked about before, and whenever it hits a large file, like these MP4s, it gets up to that speed, but it copies them so quickly that it doesn't even have time to hit, ramp up to the speeds. That was very impressive. All right, now let's do the same thing on the PNY. We're going to do a copy paste onto itself again, guys. This is making a copy onto itself. We're going to do a side by side. It peaked up just like the other one, interestingly enough, and but it slowed down. It's noticeably slower, but the speeds are still pretty good. I mean, considering that the read and or the, the read and write is supposed to be slower. Well, the read is supposed to be the same. I'm sorry, but the write is supposed to be slow. I liked that the consistency here, it's very similar to 970 EVO, also very fast. These numbers are impressive. Okay, so technically speaking, I think, and I'm gonna do a side by, again, we looked at the side by side here as well. Look, look while I'm talking, we're gonna do a side by side. And I think 970 EVO noticeably won, but this pay and Y is actually 20 bucks less. So it's $20 less. Now, if we're going to, if you're going to get a one terabyte or larger, let's say you're getting one terabyte, we're talking forty dollars less. So, if you're buying a larger, uh, if you want a larger hard drive storage, then you might want to consider PNY if you want to save money. Forty dollars is quite a bit of money for most people. 
But if you don't care about that, and you or you're buying a 500 gigabyte, then you might as well get the Samsung 970 Evo, especially for the operating system. Now I want to talk about operating system real quick. If you don't have a built-in M.2 slot, chances are your computer is not going to support it. I will show you on this screen what's required. You got to have NVMe support, and uh, you got to be able to have these specific settings. Generally speaking, you cannot boot unless your computer BIOS support it and you, you already have an M.2 built in. Otherwise, if you're putting it as an adapter, it's most likely just going to be as storage, okay? Which is also great for like if you're loading games on it, if you're doing some predictivity work, like video editing, some kind of file transfer storage, it's great for that, you know? Operating system, the main benefit from have, for having an M.2 as an operating system is to boot up and how often do you actually boot up the computer and for the updates. But you get similar results with just a regular SSD and I've actually talked about this in my other videos. There's a comparison video that I've done as well if you want to check that out. Alright guys, let's now do the crystal disk. We're going to do, let's see, which is our Evo? E, local disk E. We're going to leave everything at default. I just did a fresh install of Crystal Disk. We're going to leave everything at default. I'm going to run it and I'm going to come back with the results for the 907 EVO Plus, I should say. Not just the regular 9. This is 907 EVO Plus. Because I know it takes a while. I'm just going to come back with the results and so you guys can see them. Alright guys, so the results are coming in. This is for 970 EVO Plus. You can see the numbers right now and that are 3.5 gigabits per second read or 3,578 megabits per second and then we got the write speed of 3,279 which if I did a test again it would probably on average be 3,300 which is pretty respectful uh, re res respectful? respectful? Uh, sure why not? why the hell not? might as well be respectful I respect these speeds guys this is pretty good. It's pretty close to what the advertisement is. These things will fluctuate up and down. I mean, this is just the nature of things. But generally speaking, we got 3.5 gigabits per second, if you will. And then we got 3.3 around it of gigabits per second for the right speed. So these are the numbers for 970 EVO+. Plus. All right, so the other one is letter D for the drive. Here it is, we're going to do the same testing here. I'm going to come back to you once we are close to finish. Alright guys, so the numbers are coming in for the PNY drive. I am very, very, very surprised. This is way faster than advertised, guys, especially the write speed. This write speed is supposed to be 2,000. Look at this. It's 2,434 per second for the writing. Wow, talking about being better than advertised. We got the read speeds of 3.2. It's about
So you bought a new laptop or a desktop and you've been told that you have an M.2 drive. Yes, you do. But is it really a good M.2 drive? For example, this is one that came from my gaming laptop. And look what it says here. It's Serial ATA. So this M.2 is actually running over Serial ATA connection. Hello friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Here's the situation. A couple of years ago, I bought a gaming laptop. I thought that gaming laptop had an M.2 drive. As you can see on this box here, it actually does say PCIe super fast, blah, 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 blah. Well, now since two years has gone by, now I needed to add more storage. So I decided to take it out and see what's going on. And then I realized that the drive that was inside wasn't actually a standard M.2 drive. It's actually SATA drive. And I couldn't believe it because the drive itself looks just like an M.2 drive. In this video, I'm going to show you how it looks like uh, in BIOS and how the benchmarks are showing up as well. So that way you can tell the difference yourself and also the physical difference of the drive. So let's have a look. I'm kind of disappointed that this laptop was supposed to be gaming didn't actually come with an actual PCIe uh, drive, but I digress. We're going to install a new one and we're going to compare the benchmarks as well. Let's have a look. By the way, if you got one second to click the like button, it really makes a big difference for me. I really appreciate it. It only takes one second. Thank you guys so much. So you bought a new laptop or a desktop and you've been told that you have an M.2 drive. Yes, you do. But is it really a good M.2 drive? For example, this is one that came from my gaming laptop. And look what it says here. It's Serial ATA. So this M.2 is actually running over serial ATA connection. The way you can tell also is by having two notches on this M.2 slot, M.2 drive. The regular M.2 drive that runs over PCIe only has one notch and it's a whole lot faster. I guarantee you that. I will show you benchmarks from the beginning on my laptop using this one and then I will show you benchmarks on the new one that I installed, which is going to be a massive upgrade. Unbelievable. Make sure you do have the proper PCIe M.2 drive. Otherwise, you're just running over SATA. It's no different from just a regular solid state drive. It's no different from regular solid state drive. Trust me on this. So in BIOS, this is how it looks like now. It shows as serial ATA for the one over there. You see that? That's the one that's currently inside of it and it's under serial. You'll see whenever I install the new one, it's going to show it underneath here. I guarantee it. Just stick around and you'll see. Okay, so here's a test before installing the new updated M.2 drive. You can tell that I am plugged in with power here and that you can see that as well by the little plug-in icon there on the battery. And you can see here that I have set it to performance mode on my laptop just to make sure that everything is done correctly. 8 gigabyte file size, 5 tests, and you can see there's 50%, uh, roughly 50% of the hard drive used right now that is currently installed on this computer. So we're going to run all of these. I'm going to run it like this. I may speed it up a little bit uh, just because it can take a while to do these tests. But I wanted to, I really wanted to make sure that you guys can see the uh, performance monitor here that the usage is only 16%. The memory is 16 gigabytes. There's only 3.3 used uh, used by right now from the system. And you can see the disk usage is 100%, which makes sense. We're testing the disk usage and there's nothing else. There's no other activity going on. So all the CPU usage is right now used by the uh, crystal disk for purpose of testing. I mean, pretty much right away, you can see why you would might want to upgrade to something faster. Yeah, these are really good speeds, but these are type of speeds you will get from just a regular SATA, uh, which runs, uh, SATA 3 runs at 600 megabytes per second. You can get cheaper ones. There are M.2s, just like this one, they're gonna be slow. So this is an entry level, low end M.2 that's inside of this laptop. The one we're going to install is high end and it's going to be, you know, five to six, maybe even seven times faster than this. So this is going, this is a cheap one in here and we're going to be installing this one, which is uh, 2280 in length. So make sure that you do get the right length as well. 
and it's going to go in like this you can see they are exactly the same size and this is just real quick it's 970 evo plus pretty much the best you can get right now link in the description if you're interested it's around 100 bucks price varies but it's about right if you do use the link i really appreciate it because i do get uh, commission on that so thank you so much all right so it's very simple here we're just going to unscrew it here and what's going to happen is this is going to go up by itself it's going to come up because there's a lever on it a little bit tight but i'm going to try to put my keep my hands away so you guys can see it happen so once the screw comes up it will just probably kind of pop up because it's on an angle huh maybe the make sure you don't lose the screw because we're going to reuse it so if i touch it here it's probably going to pop up Ah, oh, it looks like there's it's stuck. Okay, so there's adhesive underneath this one here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna get some pointing. This one is actually stuck to the motherboard. Uh, right there, right underneath. You see that? This one is actually glued on there. That's okay. I'm just gonna lift it like this because I know it actually goes this way. So just take your time, never yank on anything. It's, it's gonna come loose. I know it, it's inserted like, you see how it pops up like that? There you go. So now, if you pay attention here, this is how it's inserted. I'm just gonna pull it out like that. You see how there's an angle there? And we're just gonna put it in like this. Make sure the notch is matching right there. And we're gonna put it in like this. Push it in until the copper connectors are gone and I'm just gonna lower it here real quick I'm gonna use that padding there actually that sticky pad to my advantage here usually you would have to keep it down while you screw it on am I getting this right here we go yep I had to adjust it because I can't I wasn't sure if I actually had it in in focus alright so it's there and then we're just gonna use this in reverse we're going to install it so gently I'm going to screw this back on and in case I haven't mentioned it you can't boot to OS unless your computer supports it so if you have a question and wondering if you can boot to OS yes this one can boot to OS obviously I don't have any other drives installed uh, but if you're installing like an adapter or something in your computer your computer may not boot, support booting to OS usually like older computers do not so you know just keep that in mind if you have an old computer chances are it's not going to boot um, if you add an adapter with the M.2 uh, drive capability. All right, let's have a look to see what's going on inside of BIOS. These are the current, this is what BIOS sees right now. And imagine, uh, imagine, <laughs> yes, I imagine. Remember how I told you that this one is actually serial ATA? And it does say there it's serial ATA. This one, it actually comes up as PCIe SSD. 500 gigabytes Samsung SSD um, 970 Evo 500 gigabytes so this is what shows up now that's weird that we've upgraded from the serial one to PCI one we're going to install operating system on this and then we're going to see the benchmark all right first thing first I wanted to show you something important you want to make sure that your BIOS is set to UEFI so these type of drives support that if you're set to legacy it's not going to work legacy is basically means like old school type of hard drives you know what I mean or old I should say old school type of booting uh, essentially SATA so you want to make sure that a UFI uh, is enabled so now I should be able to install fresh Windows 10 on it Give it a sec. Give it a sec here, guys. Give it a sec. 
It's almost there. It's almost there. All right. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I sound like a... Uh... <laughs> Here we go. I was going to say I sound like uh, Elvis, but I probably don't. Elvis Presley. There it is. Cortana. I'm Cortana. No, Cortana. No, come I'll on, Cortana. Sign in here, attach a Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to How do. How do I get an exit out of this? Use your voice or the keyboard along the way. Come on, Cortana. And if you to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. Yes. I hate you, Cortana. This is so stupid. Oh, look, of course it's gonna... No. Mm. Decline. Um, oh my, look at all this crap. Now look at all this crap. I wasn't going to talk smack about them, but look at all this crap. All of that stuff is, is spying on you and trying to advertise to you and trying to sell you their service. I understand you got to have a business, but man, this is too much. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. My God. It really ruined my day, this, this, this crap. Hopefully the benchmark of this. And I'm, I guarantee you, I will disable all of that stuff. I just don't have time to show you guys this right now. But I'll disable all of those services. All right. This is insanely ridiculous. All right, I'm going to do... Okay, airplane mode is on. 1% CPU usage. That's good enough. All right, the moment of truth, guys. I'm going to we're we're going to test this bad boy now. Remember, we had like 540 here, and it was around 500 there. Oh my God, did you see that? Oh my God, look how fast that is. That is sick. How many times is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Seven times faster almost seven times faster than the other one. Seven times faster than, where is this? Seven times faster than that. That's the read speed. Write speed should be pretty impressive. Should be pretty impressive. As soon as we get to it. I'm gonna leave it like this. And we can watch the, the, the happenings. I can't believe how much time I wasted installing and configuring Microsoft that forces you to install your own, that, they, that forces you to use their own online account. From a business standpoint, I get it. But from like functional standpoint, it's ridiculous. I don't want everything to be on the cloud. I want things to be locally, installed locally. Man, look at those speeds, man. Look at that. That is pretty crazy, man. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. By the way, you don't necessarily have to buy a Samsung. You know, this is, this is the rated speed for this Samsung that we installed, the 970 EVO Plus. You can buy other brands too. You can buy like a mid-range one if you want to, if you can't afford a Samsung one, you know. But either way this is going over PCIe it's going it's a huge huge difference over than the SATA and uh, it, it goes to show how you can buy a computer that states that it has M.2 on it and this and that but we this is proof right here that it's not I mean how much evidence do you want I've given you all the evidence you, you have that, that you can you can get about this why they even made this over SATA? I don't even know. I don't even know. Why? This is ridiculous. Look at the write speed. Oh my god. Seven times. Seven times faster. Seven times. That's crazy, man. Almost seven times. But, I mean, look at it. Difference between 400... 50, 60, whatever it was, write speed, to 3,247. Man, what an upgrade. What an upgrade. I'm just going to wait for it to show up this second number and maybe even a third one. But that, 
that pretty much completes it guys if you have a second please please click the like button and please use the links in the description I really appreciate it it does give me a commission and that's the best way to show your appreciation to me honestly just click on the link what do you got to lose all it does is just gives me like a percentage of the sale it's not like a markup for you all it does is just you click second one second and you, you lose nothing but you do me a favor you, you, throw a couple, you throw a couple of bucks to me it's like the same thing as when people use those super chats whenever somebody's live streaming except you don't pay nothing you don't pay nothing extra it's just that the, in this case Amazon is gonna throw a couple of dial, dollars my way for a referral that's all there is and you're doing me a huge favor man thanks so much and there we go those are the numbers I hope you have a wonderful day this is very educational not just for me hopefully for you as well if you have any questions feel free to ask I'll be glad I'll be glad to answer them alright guys take care bye bye place the file in destination Oof, that was so fast and that's going from regular SSD to the newest one so that was over 350 megabytes per second write and read speed and now I'm gonna copy to itself so this is the newest one we're gonna copy and make a copy of a file to itself so this is going to be read and write speed combined to itself oh my god that was insanely fast hello everyone my name is Irvin also known as Kobo Man in today's video I will show you how to upgrade your computer to the latest M.2 type of solid state drive so that way we have the, the latest and the fastest and the greatest performance ever when it comes to hard drives right so this is the best one this is the current one 970 EVO NVMe M.2 with the VNAND SSD which is the new type of memory that they switched over from a standard solid state drives a type of memory that it's used anyways without boring you too much here's a problem a lot of times we want the best but we don't necessarily want to spend a whole lot of money on buying a new computer and we want to install one of these and this is what they look like this is one of these M.2 solid state drives and the problem comes when we try to install it into our computer that is few years old chances are it will not have this type of slot which it has these two types of notches so let's open it up this is a HP 800 G2 type of computer so let's say you have one of these or something like it or anything that is you know a little bit older it's not going to have a place for you to put this it's simply not so if you look here where where can you put this doesn't go there definitely not there this is our PCI Express 16 time slot chances are we're gonna have a video card here so that's out of the question these two are PCI Express times two I believe times one I'm sorry these are times one and the next available thing we have is PCI Express times four which is this white one so you know either way we can't there's no place to put this they, where, what can we do about that well we can buy an adapter that we can use to plug in our solid state drive that is the fastest right so an option to that is so one option that we have is to buy one of these adapters this one is by Ventac and there will be a link in the description box just to make sure you guys buy the correct one thank you very much if you do buy one and this one is an adapter for M.2 NVMe plus and also has a SATA M.2 SATA SSD and it goes inside of PCI Express times four so as I mentioned earlier we just want to make sure that we have one of these white slots which is PCI Express times four so this is perfect we have it free now we can install our adapter it is crucial to make sure you buy the correct one so I will link you the proper one 
inside the box we have our adapter. Now you can see that there is a slot for our hard drive. Now we can insert our hard drive and the way we would do that is by inserting it as so. Just a sec, I will zoom in so you guys can see this properly. Now we have a place for our hard drive. There is a little slot that matches just like so and then we can now insert it precisely like this a little bit on an angle sort of like memory in a laptop so it goes in on an angle and you gently push it in to make sure that the little copper connectors are no longer visible and then we simply lower it it's going to be a little bit a little bit of spring action but we do have a little hole here which we are going to use a screw and a washer to attach it's super simple they come with the package by the way the package for this adapter also comes with this really nice screwdriver so you don't actually have to have your own so it, it is a tool you need but you don't actually have to have one because it does come with it it's very surprising I've never seen an adapter which only costs about fifteen dollars that came with a screwdriver and it came with screw and a washer which are these. I'm going to try to angle as properly as I can. See how this uh, gold color one has a little, it's a little bit different and it goes underneath here. So if you have a same type of drive, which I will link in the description box, you can use this washer, insert it from underneath, as so and just kind of hold it with your index finger or whichever finger you prefer. Now we're going to use this screw to attach it and we're going to use our screwdriver that came with the adapter and then we're going to screw it in. Ah, Good thing it's magnetic otherwise I would have lost it by now. Doesn't help that I had quite a bit of coffee this morning, so I'm a bit shaky. Ah, come on. I promise you, it's not this difficult, it's just that I'm clumsy. There it is. Okay, so once you get it caught like that, I'm trying to get you a little good angle here. Just gently screw it in. You don't have to force nothing. No, you know, you don't need a lot of, just very gently, as soon as you feel it's tightening, you're done, you know, so now it's just, it's not going anywhere. Uh, by the way, this, I have attached uh, a plate, back plate, for a low profile computer, which is this one. So it will come by default with a regular standard size plate for a regular computer, for regular size desktop, right? For like a mid tower or something like that. It does come with a low profile adapter, which is great because my 800 G1 it's a low profile computer, so I went ahead and attached that. I did notice about this adapter that this is actually a little bit long. It could be that my case is a little bit bent, but I left it a little bit loose here, right? So it's not a big deal. So I just left it a little bit loose to make it easier for me to actually install this drive. So it's just slightly loose as long as it's in there and it has a little bit of room. Because for me, it was a little bit difficult to align this with the PCI Express slot times four. And of course you have a room for another drive which is used for the SATA. So if you connect the SATA, you can connect the drive here. This is what this is for. This one is specifically used from two PCI Express times four, which is, uh, should be quite a bit, and should be a lot faster than just a regular SATA, right? Okay, now that we have this connected, I'm going to insert it into our PCI Express times four. Of course, always be gentle with installing these. There's a little gap underneath here. I hope you can see it. I will try to kind of lift it up. There's a little gap underneath every time you install a card that you have to make sure that this part goes inside of. And ahead of time, I removed the little, just the protective backplate that used to be here. And now I'm going to insert this as so. So again, be gentle, take your time. You know, all, all computers are different. 
in generally speaking all computers will have one of these white slots which is what you need then I'm just going to align it once I know it's aligned properly I'm just going to push it down and there it goes the way you know it's pushed in all the way is that you don't see any copper connectors now you're good to go and I'm going to close this up I'm going to connect this just in case although I'm not using the slot for the SATA connector but I'm going to connect it anyways just in case I decide to use it for something later that's that and with that being installed I'm going to put my cover back on I'm going to go to my computer and show you what you need to do next after this. Ideally speaking, this should just show up as a drive on your computer and then all you got to do is just format it, which I will show you real quick too, it's no big deal. But if you were trying to use it as a boot drive, you can certainly do so. Depending on your computer, you may have to go to BIOS and make some changes in there for it to show up properly, maybe not. But just keep that in mind if you can if you're trying to install OS on it on a fresh computer and you don't see it make sure you go inside of BIOS and make appropriate changes okay let's go to our computer and see so with the hardware installed itself and with the computer turned on what is the first thing we're going to check well obviously we're going to check to see if our drive shows up as you may have noticed my computer here has two drives installed and to see if the third one is installed we're going to go to this PC and unfortunately our drive doesn't show up well why is that as I mentioned earlier we will have to format the drive in order to show up if we want to get a little bit more technical to make sure that our adapter that we've installed for our drive is installed properly we can check that first so let's do that real quick and then we're gonna go and format our drive and set it up properly so it actually shows up and the way you do that is through the device manager so if you have you know Windows 10 you can just type in device device manager go through that or alternatively you can just type in you know my computer which is old way of saying uh, this PC uh, on Windows 7 but it's this PC on Windows 10 so once you have that you may have an icon on your desktop as well you can just right click it select properties and then from there you can access device manager so let's open up our device manager and see if there are any errors you know we would expect to be some errors because our drive is not showing up but they're not because everything's actually correct we just have to do a little bit of configuration so in order to see if our um, NVAM uh, driver controller has been installed, we're going to go to storage controllers. We're going to expand that to see. And then we can, at the bottom, see that we do have indeed standard NVM Express controller installed. These other two are for our SATA loopback controller storage space controller and vhd loopback controller we don't have to worry about that at this point we do want to make sure that this here is installed without any issues this indicates to us that the adapter works perfectly so this is all good so now let's go format our drive so that way we can see it the one one way to do that is through our manage options and this is find again with this pc or my computer and then going to right click it and then we're going to manage our storage from there uh, not to confuse you we're just going to right click on this pc my computer or whatever it is that you have and then we're going to select manage which is right here we're going to select manage and then we're going to look for storage which is right here and then we're going to look for disk management because we know that we've installed a disk or this is an old way of saying you know hard drive but because it's actually no longer a disk it's actually kind of funny but this is where it's going to be so we're going to select that and we're going to see what happens and 
the system has found our drive immediately and it's asking us what kind of style of partition do we want and this is where we can tell it to create a master boot record type of partition on this PCI Express M.2 slot drive but you know so you can select that if you want and click OK and then it's going to create a type of partition for a boot type of partition um, for that I will go ahead and, and leave it at GPT and uh, it's a new type of partition that is not recognized by a previous version of Windows so Windows 7 will not have this option whatsoever I'm going to click OK and now we have our partition here which hasn't been allocated so basically what this does is tells we, we tell the computer how much of the storage we want to use because if we go back here to our computer here we can still see I'm going to refresh this it's still not showing up because all it is is just a partition it hasn't been allocated in the sense where we need to tell the computer how much of it do we want to use and we want to use all of it why not why would we want to not use all of it so we're going to right click it here we know this is our drive um, you know and uh, we're going to select new simple volume and this is self-explanatory we're just going to click next on this wizard we're going to leave it at default and we're just going to click next again here you can change the letter if you really want to I will change it I will just leave it at E to make it simple and uh, there are other things you can do both right now we're just you know installing this drive so that we can use it um, if you are interested in a lot of other IT stuff or computer related stuff that go into detail about this stuff um, you know you can certainly go through my channel I have a lot of videos like that then we're going to click next and I'm going to format it I'm going to leave it NTFS uh, you know because you know it's internal we, we're not going to use anything else so leave everything at default you can label it as something else in my case I'm going to be using this as a scratch drive for my video editor because it's fast Adobe catch so I'm going to call it that and I'm going to perform a quick format <clears throat> and I'm going to click next and then finish just to confirm that everything is what I want and as you can see it appeared immediately here and now we're going to go inside of it so every time you uh, you know partition a drive and then after you format it it actually is less of actual um, storage if you will you guys probably know this already if a drive is 256 gigabytes after you format it it actually goes down to 232 uh, there's an explanation that anyways I'm not gonna bug you about the technical aspects of this we're just gonna see how fast it is so this is our regular standard drive this is magnetic drive this is not even a solid state this one is solid state so we're, let's go do a quick test to see why you would even want to do this I'm just going to go here and I'm going to let's do this I'm just going to take one of my old videos here these are pretty large 4k videos this is 7.92 7 let's do this one 755 megabyte let's see how fast we can copy this to our regular solid state I'm going to create this this is our regular solid state drive as a boot system this is not the one we installed so this is OS SSD and I'm going to create a um, new folder in here we're going to call this one optical drive old style of hard drive okay I'm going to send create desktop shortcut this is just so we can tell the test in between we're going to copy back and forth and we're going to create another folder inside of our new this is our brand new m.2 drive and I'm going to send that to desktop 
so that way we can test to see how fast we can copy from from each two right okay gonna sort them like this so this is old newer the best the newest which is what we have installed here so i'm going to copy from old uh this is old one we have we're going to go inside of it I'm going to open it up here old style operating system and m.2 so the video i've selected here was 755 megabytes let's see how fast it will it will uh, write this into our regular solid state drive so this is our regular old this is our old drive right this is old drive i just want to make sure that that's clear this is old we're going to copy to itself it's going to we're going to see write and read speeds in real time and it'll just show up in windows it's just going to show how fast it's going so we're going to do this i'm going to paste it so it's copying to itself and it's about it says about 10 seconds it doesn't mean much okay so we're, we're seeing around 40 megabytes per second on average when it comes to speed now we're going to copy from old to new and then i'm going to copy to itself afterwards so this is testing speed to the new one to the newer one and look at that it's almost 100 megabytes per second and now we're going to copy from the old one to the newest one so what we saw here is that around 100 megabytes per second actual speed actual speed to regular solid state now this is the newest one from the old one keep in mind and this is also going about the same speed this is because the read speed from the old one is limited to that so now we're going to copy from standard ssd to itself just to say look at those speeds it does start off strong but it does taper down to 60 ish right so the read speed on this one on the regular solid state is around that in real time now we're going to copy from this to that to the newest one that we have place the file in destination Ooh, that was so fast and that's going from regular ssd to the newest one so that was over 350 megabytes per second write and read speed and now i'm going to copy to itself so this is the newest one we're going to copy and make a copy of a file to itself so this is going to be read and write speed combined to itself oh my god that was insanely fast that was insanely fast okay okay so i'm gonna do it again oh my god that was so fast guys so really why would you not want this especially if you're doing video editing this is so insanely fast i'm actually mind blown because i've never had one of these myself this is crazy fast oh my god all right guys i hope that wasn't too much to keep up with and i hope i demonstrated that properly but the speed of that was just insane and again if you're interested in any of this there are links in the description for this adapter and for this drive insane speeds guys thank you so much Please tell your friends about this. I really do appreciate it. And I am here for you if you have any questions, if you need any help in regards to this. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Oh, man, I can't wait to, to play with this. Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man. In today's video, I will show you how to install an M.2 drive. This is really easy to do, and anybody should be able to do it. 
That being said, please take one second to like this video. I really appreciate it. That way I'm not going to play any ads on this very, very short video. Before you do anything, please make sure you get the correct drive for your PC. If you need help with that, please let me know. I'll gladly help you with that. Or you can just follow the links in the description for the recommendations that I have when it comes to purchasing the proper M.2. Needless to say, be very careful when dealing with these sensitive components. Make sure you align them properly and generally take your time before you proceed to do anything. All right, let's get into it. Then we're going to install our VNAND SSD M.2 solid state drive. This motherboard comes with two, two options to install this. The first one is too long. The second one is just the right length. So we're going to use it in that one. Of course, you can use it in the other one as well. The, what you see on top, the black part is actually a heatsink, which I was very surprised to find in this motherboard. Uh, once we remove the heatsink, we're going to insert our M.2 solid state drive on an angle like that first and then we're going to lower it down carefully making sure that all the contacts are present. Then we're going to use our heatsink. We're going to remove the little sticky part that covers it. It's going to stick on there. We're going to then use the screw that came with the motherboard to reattach the M.2 solid state drive which is crazy fast by the way. Thank you so much for watching and again if you want a good recommendation on an ssd there is a link in the description box below and if you need any help please let me know i'm always available and i will answer your questions as soon as possible in comments below all right guys you have a wonderful day and take care so the difference is clear if you want the best of the best you're obviously gonna know at this point which one to buy Hello my friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobelman. In today's video, we're testing two Samsung M.2 and VME drives. And specifically, the first one is 970 EVO. So this is the original 970 EVO. And then recently, they came out with 970 EVO Plus. I have both of those installed in my computer, which is i9-9900 uh, system that can hold two M.2 drives at the same time. So they're both installed into the motherboard and that there is literally no advantage of either one when it comes to the hardware that's being used to test uh, its performance. Now, you can see that I'm getting ready to do some things when it comes to testing. We're gonna, of course, use the crystal disk, which is kind of a standard. We're gonna see the read and write on both of those. Uh, but starting, we're going to do Windows test uh, when it comes to read and write to see what kind of results we can get in that. And you notice probably here that I'm copying something over. What I'm going to do is also test the game load time. So we're going to compare those side to side. And one of the other things we're going to do is test the compression. What I'm going to do is test the compression of two of these videos and then see which one comes out ahead. So this is a pretty exciting video if you like this type of stuff. And uh, moving on, I wanna show you that I do have the most recent update or a driver for our NVMe Samsung drive that comes from uh, Samsung it, it's themselves. And here is the, the recent update. I'm just gonna run it to show you that it's going to tell me that the driver is already up to date and it's not going to let me update it any further. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. As you can see, I executed the install of the drive and uh, there it is. Uh, and if I click, you can see here that it's already that it's already installed. So it, the only thing that it gives me is option to uh, uninstall it, but I don't want to do that. All right, so let's have a look at our device manager. I wanted to show you what's inside of my computer. Keep in mind they're both installed on the same motherboard. My motherboard has two M.2 slot and they're both installed uh, right next to each other pretty much. Here's the 970 uh, EVO, which is the standard one, which is 250 gigabytes. And here's the one that I've just installed, which is NVMe Samsung SSD 970 Plus. But for some reason it shows up as a SCSI disk device. But again, as I've mentioned, I do have the most recent Samsung driver installed for both of these. And it's kind of bizarre that it shows up like so, but I digress. Uh, we're going to do some testing. We're going to see what's going on uh, with the settings in here. Anyways, let's have a look at my computer. I just want to show you what it is. So my local C is 970 EVO standard, and here is 970 EVO+. Plus. Friends, I'm not going to play any ads at this point, so please take a second to click the like button. I really appreciate it. This way I don't have to bother you with ads. Thank you so much. Okay, now 
the first thing we're going to do is use Windows itself to do uh, some testing and we're going to do a side by side what we're going to do is going to uh, have a couple of labels here created for our testings we're going to have standard on the left side and then we're going to have Evo Plus Plus, on the right side, we're going to do side-by-side -side testing with Windows beginning, and then we're going to go through the other ones. Okay, and these are the commands we're going to run. I'm going to open up CMD. I'm going to open up CMD. I'm going to run it as administrator. I'm going to have two of them open. We're going to have them side-by-side -side action. All right, so here we are. Here's our setup for Windows testing. We're going to test the uh, read speed first, and for that, the command is as so. We're going to run it, and we're running a 970 EVO standard on the left side. And now we're going to test the same thing on the other one. I'm just going to switch it over to E, which is 970 EVO plus. So here are results. The read speed for this one here for the 970 EVO standard is basically two gigabytes per second, which is 2006 uh, megabytes per second to be precise. And it finished in 1.78 seconds. So under two seconds when it comes to that. And on the right hand side, we have EVO plus that uh, runs at 3081 megabits, megabytes per second. So it's almost three gigabytes per second and it finished at 1.7 seconds. So it kind of finished pretty close to the same speed, but when it comes to the speed, uh, eventually uh, the, uh, the EVO Plus should be faster. So in the long run, if it was a longer test, it would definitely be way ahead of uh, standard EVO. So let's go ahead and test the write speed, and we're going to use a similar command. So for that, I'm just going to change the read to write. I'm going to hit enter. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And... I'm going to type in right. So here we are. Standard Evo, 1,766 megabytes per second, finished in second and a half, 1.47 seconds. And the Evo Plus is writing at 3,154 megabytes per second, and it finished in less than a second, 0.95 seconds. All right, those are cool results. Let's move on to some other synthetic benchmark and that would be the crystal disk so the difference is clear if you want the best of the best you're obviously going to know at this point which one to buy so the testing i've done was off camera sort of speak i made sure i turned off the recording software and any other background software running uh, to make sure that the testing is as accurate as possible on the left hand side you can see results of 970 evo standard and you can see that it does have impressive read and write speeds however if you look on the right hand side here for 9 evo plus the difference is quite massive especially notable in the write speed the write speed is more than three times faster compared to standard so yes you definitely if you want the best one you definitely want the 970 EVO Plus, considering that it's only 20 to $30 more. I mean, it's gonna vary from country to country. Yes, definitely go for the 970 EVO Plus in this synthetic benchmark. So this is a synthetic benchmark. We're gonna do uh, some video game load times right now to see which one is faster. And then followed, we're going to do a compression test and see which one is faster. All right, guys, let's get to it. And for this, we're going to use, uh, let's see here. I have it here ready. We're going to use a border lands three load time. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it get to the menu itself because you know that when you launch a game, it takes a while because they want to show you the splash screens and that's that. What I'm going to do is actually do the load times in whenever I click continue. So it's going to toss me into the world. It's going to load at that point, not loading off like I opened up the application because that's going to be the same no matter what.
Well, there you have it, guys. That's the speed comparison when it comes to loading. As you can tell, I'm actually recording this outside of the PC to make sure there's nothing else running in the background that would basically uh, influence the load times. So everything is recorded outside of the computer so you can see the actual real loading time without any recording software running or anything else. And as a final test, we're going to test the compression how fast you can compress two files and it's very simple it's going to be two large video files and I'm going to compress them and I'm going to compress them using WinRAR software I'm going to execute it just like so and now we're going to see side by side which one is faster and I'm going to execute them separately I will show them side by side so you guys can see which one actually finishes fast but I won't be able to know this as I am talking because I have to wait for the first one to finish before I can uh, execute the second one. But what you're looking at is actually side by side. So whichever finishes first, uh, whichever uh, window disappears first, that's going to be the winner. So uh, once it finishes, I will put you know a little label on here that says which one is the winner. So far. Um, looks like the EVO standard is doing pretty well. I won't know how well the EVO Plus is doing. I, I wonder how close it is. I actually don't know. It's kind of interesting because I really don't know. But I do see that EVO uh, standard still has around two minutes left to finish. But it's going to be very interesting nonetheless. And I'm going to be interested to see the results. And I know you guys can see it right now, and I can't. It's kind of like, it's kind of weird. It's kind of, would you consider that meta? I'm really kind of curious about that. Because you're the ones who actually, can actually see this. But I, as I am talking right now, I can't actually see the one on the right. You guys are the only ones who can see the one on the right. As far as I know, it might be even done by now. I wouldn't know. But <laughs> it's it's going to be very interesting. Uh, so far, uh, I mean, this one is doing okay. I mean, I can't tell whether it's fast or not, uh, comparatively speaking. You know what I mean? Because I don't usually do a video uh, or, or a compression of uh, files into a WinRAR format at all. I usually, uh, if I do get something, it's already compressed, so I would do uncompressing. But I am curious to see how well did. Guys, did Evil Plus finish already? I wonder. I wonder. Um, hmm. I don't know. This one is almost done. It's got 45 seconds left. Uh, I guess about 40 seconds at this point. Uh, compression duration 98%. And by the way, these are default settings. So, all right. We'll see. We'll see how well this one uh, does. 30 seconds left. And, uh, you know, I, I am curious. The, technically, the other one should be done by now. Long done. I might be wrong. F feel free to leave a comment and make fun of me on this because I have no idea. I really don't. All right. This one is done. Just about done. Three seconds. So this one is done almost at two minutes and 56 seconds. All right. Whatever the results are, I'll put it on the screen right now. All right, so looks like the Evo Plus finished it at, finished at two minutes and twenty six seconds from what I've seen. That's quite impressive. It's quite a bit faster than the original nine hundred seventy Evo. Wow, that's pretty amazing. On some other tests that I've done, actually without using recording software because that takes up some of the processing power, I've actually seen it as fast as 1 minute and 36 seconds for the same files that I've tested individually without the recording software. So the speeds are incredibly impressive for the 9 EVO, for 970 EVO Plus. It's a huge upgrade for only about 30 to $40, I suppose, more uh, when it comes to uh, you know, buying this type of performance for the money, you just can't beat it. Huge, huge upgrade. I'm surprised it's not called something else and not just 970 EVO Plus because this drive is seems to be a whole lot different uh, And when it comes to speed compared to the original 970 EVO. 
Guys, if you're interested in buying one of these, there's a link in the description box below. Also, there will be a link in the first comment that you see below the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please take a moment to share this video with your friends. See what they think. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching again, and you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. And I'm going to, you can clearly see here that it's copying to the external SSD M.2 drive that I have named as such. I'm going to do a, a paste. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's pretty, pretty darn impressive. That's a six gigabytes, guys. That's six gigabytes in, what was it? Five seconds? I gotta see this again. Okay, okay, okay. Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Copeman. Today, we are reviewing an awesome, awesome brand aluminum M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure that comes with a USB Type A and USB Type C cable as well. So, this is one of those enclosures that are compatible with NVMe drives that are M.2 SSD, specifically M key. And for that, we're going to be using, uh, for the testing part of it, we're going to be using a Samsung 970 EVO Plus, which is pretty much the best one you can buy. And of course, this company shows to be testing it with this in order to make sure you get the fastest speeds possible. There are links in the description if you're interested in any of this. And just to throw this out there real quick, I did get this item from this company. They sent it to me to review. However, it's not a sponsored video or anything like that. So this is going to be completely unbiased. I'm going to be unboxing and I'm going to be testing the speeds to see if we can, to see what kind of speeds we can get with this aluminum external uh, enclosure. So just to mention real quick again, this is NVMe M.2 SSD M key hard disks. For all the compatible sizes, I will list them right here so to make sure that you get the right ones if you do decide to give this a shot. Anyways, this supports USB 3.1 generation to type C to M.2 SSD. So that means that you can use this on a USB up to USB 3.1, which should give you 10 gigabits per second ultra high speed transmission. Of course, this is also supposed to be compatible with Windows, Linux, and Mac operating systems. So if you happen to have a Mac, you can also use this. So why would you want to use this? So if you're somebody who does video editing or deals with a lot of large files and you want a portable, fast way to have a storage available to you, this would be a good option for you to potentially use. Again, we're going to test the speeds to make sure that this is uh, you know, legitimate and that it's uh, you know, really good and worth your money because otherwise I wouldn't want you to spend any money on this in case it's not good, but we're gonna see. All right, let's get to the unboxing. I'm just gonna slide this out like so. I'm going to open it up like this, and then I'm going to see what's inside. Here are the screws and a little spacer there for our adapter. Here is a little screwdriver that comes with it, so that's pretty neat. Here's the first cable that we see here. It's a regular cable to type to USB Type C, which I'm assuming the enclosure is connected to the Type C, and then you just connect it to a regular USB. Of course, it is backwards compatible, and here is a USB Type C to Type C as well. And then we have the enclosure itself in here. Here is the aluminum enclosure. It seems to be a pretty uh, nice design. There's some little, there's a little weight to it, which is not necessarily a, a bad thing at all. It means it's it's a solid construction. Here is the connector for our USB Type C, and it connects like uh, that. And again, we're going to be testing with this this on the USB 3.1, which I do have on my computer. I will show that to you right now where we're going to connect that as well to make sure we get the most speed we can get out of it. All right, on the other side, we do have a couple of screws that we're going to unscrew in order to open this up, okay? And of course, comes with a little manual and shows you how to do all of this. All right, let's move on. So again, this is a brand new uh, a Samsung drive that I'm going to open up here and then we're going to use that as the test uh, feature of it. I'm going to unpack it real quick. All right, quick unboxing of the M.2 970 EVO, link in description if you're interested. And here is our super fast NVMe drive, which we're going to install in here. Okay, now we're ready to install. So we're going to use a provided screwdriver to unscrew this real quick. That's one, that's two, 
after removing that this becomes something that you can open up like that now we can on we can slide it out it just falls out like that very nicely now whenever you do this make sure the orientation stays the same whenever you push it in I'm gonna flip it over because it's on the other side but I'm gonna to have to make sure that I do put it back in the way it came out okay so on the other side are the actual connectors now depending on which drive you get I'm, I'm going to be you're going to be using a different type of spacer so this is why it came with extra screw and the spacer however I'm using the longest one which is the 80 millimeter and I'm just going to insert it like so it's very simple just like you would do it on any M.2 you can see that you just have to make sure you align the notch that with the notch that is there it's very simple you put it in on an angle like this so just be careful whenever you do this make sure it's on an angle like this don't try to push it flat or anything like that make sure it's on an angle like this push it in and then we're going to lower it and then screw it down now for that I'm going to need one of these screwdriver screws alright again make sure it's all the way down like that so you don't see the connectors and then we're going to lower it down like so I'm going to take my screwdriver and make sure you get the silver one that's in the package. It does help that this little handy screwdriver is magnetic and then we're going to insert it like that. Sorry about that, I do have shaky hands. Okay. It's kind of awkward for me to show you the right angle and film it at the same time. Okay, so gently screw it on there with the provided screwdriver. You don't need to go crazy on it. Anyways, there it is. It's fully installed and we're going to insert it back in. Remember we're going to slide it back in this way. That's how it came out. Make sure that the USB part of it is on the other side. Make sure that everything's aligned properly and it should just fall in like that. That's what it seems like, all right? And then we're going to put our little lid back on and the screws, little black screws that came with it. Tell you what, it does help that this screwdriver is magnetic. Just tightening down the remainder of these two screws and now with our USB cable we're going to plug it in like so and it's supposed to be according to the box on there it's supposed to be plug and play no need to install any drivers for this you see it's a USB 3.1 and we're going to plug this thing into it right now here we go so here we are inside the computer and let's see what happened. Now it goes without saying, if you have a USB 3.0 or 3.1, make sure you do get the correct drivers just in case uh, you're not getting the correct speeds or whatnot. Uh, here it is, our uh, PC open up and I can see right away that the drive doesn't show up or anything like that. But this could be related to the fact that maybe, maybe the drive itself needs to be formatted or allocated in space. So let's have a look at that real quick. So what we're going to do, we're going to right click our computer, we're going to go to manage. And from there, we're going to go to disk management here. And uh, let's just see here what happens. And it looks like it found it and it's asking me, hey, do you want to initialize it? And here, of course, it asks you if you want to use two different type of partitions. Now, if you're trying to boot from this drive, you might want to select MBR, which is a master boot record type of partition. I'm just gonna leave it at GPT. So yes, it is probably possible to boot uh, to Windows operating system on this hard drive. So of course you have to make sure it's uh, enabled like so if your computer supports booting from USB. So just keep that in mind. Some BIOS may not support this, but if your computer supports booting from USB, yes, you can potentially boot to this drive. So chances are this drive might be faster than your computer drive. So anyways, I'm just going to leave it at GPT and I'm going to click OK. And now if we scroll down, we can see where our drive shows up. And it's supposed to be 500 gigabytes, but you guys know whenever it's formatted, it actually way less. And you can see now that it's unallocated. Unallocated means that you have to tell it, okay, how much 
of this volume do you want to use for storage? So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to click select new simple volume and then I'm going to this wizard comes up and I'm just going to click next through it because all it is is just ask you hey you want to use all the space and you can specify less if you wanted to have two different partitions anyways I want to use the whole thing so all you got to do is just keep clicking next and you can change the drive letter if you want I'm just going to leave it at E it doesn't matter to me at this point and I'm going to leave it at default as well I'm going to leave the format at NTFS I'm going to label it I'm going to change the label and I'm going to call it external SSD M.2 drive okay I'm gonna do a perform quick and I'm just gonna click next and I'm gonna click next and now it's ready for us to see how it opened it up right away and now if I go inside of my computer you can see that it shows up right there and it's full all right now let's go ahead and do some testing see how fast it is I'm going to copy some stuff over and I'm going to see some real world action the first thing to do is do some crystal disk benchmarking all right let's see what happens so here's our crystal disk mark I'm going to run it I'm going to use the 64-bit version because why not I'm going to leave it at uh, five counts and I'm going to leave it at a test size of eight gigabytes and then see what happens I'm going to make sure over here that my new drive E is selected you can see now that it's 0% 466 gigabytes uh, available and I'm going to click test all by the way, while we're testing, I do want to say that I do have a pretty decent computer. This is an i9-9900K computer, so there is no bottleneck at any point in this testing. This is purely testing at 3.1 USB speeds, and it's supposed to be reading at 10 gigabits per second and writing at those same speeds, which normally are rated around 800 megabytes per second read and write typically however so far we're getting really good results 958 megabytes per second is an amazing speed it's actually faster than I expected now we're going to see after the read speeds we're going to see what the write speeds are so in the moment we're going to see that as well all right so the write speed is really really impressive considering this is an external enclosure so far we have the read speed of 958 megabytes per second maximum and the write speed of almost one terabyte so or one gigabyte i'm sorry so 989 megabytes per second these are some incredible speeds considering this is an external enclosure so keep in mind if you are somebody who needs to have an external fast storage this is a really really good option for you especially if you're someone who does video editing or some kind of media type of thing where you could use external storage of this type so let's say you do video editing like I do in 4k boy I tell you these speeds are would be super helpful just to have a extra storage on hand to store and edit from because whenever you do video editing in 4k um, and those, those sizes are just humongous and you want those speeds in order to edit uh, without any delay so that way you can just drag and drop seek through do this and that of course you can use this to store your video games your just files your media anything like that and these speeds are impressive again I'm just showing you unbiased uh, test of the crystal disk and of course we're going to do here in a moment the actual real world speeds of what we can expect when copying and moving and loading certain files all right so this is the final result if you want to pause and have a good look again these are the maximum speeds we get so far so good all right let's have a look at the real world comparison all right here's a speed test folder that I have created and inside of it I have a bunch of different videos and they're all 4k or it either doesn't matter I'm going to show you how big this folder is so it's a combination of different files and it's a six gigabyte folder now this is stored on my PC so this is stored inside of my videos folder and my main my main folder that the video for or I should say my main operating system is on another m.2 as well so the reason I did this I'm going to copy from one m.2 to another in order to provide a fair comparison meaning that if I'm copying from an m.2 to another m.2 it's going to give it the maximum possible speed of read and write 
That way there's no bottleneck of any sort. See, that makes more sense, right? You don't want to create a bottleneck. I'm not going to copy from a magnetic drive like a Seagate or something really old and that's not going to be fair. This way I'm copying from something that's equally as fast to something that uh, should be fast. It's, so I'm going to have it here side by side. I'm going to open up our external drive folder here. Here it is. I'm going to do some adjustment here and you can clearly see here that it's copying from videos on my PC. I'm going to copy and I'm going to, you can clearly see here that it's copying to the external SSD M.2 drive that I have named as such. I'm going to do a, a paste. Oh wow, okay. That's that's pretty pretty darn impressive. That's a six gigabytes, guys. That's six gigabytes in what was it? F five seconds? I gotta see this again. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to do it again. I'm I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna shut up for a second here and I'm going to see. That's six gigabytes. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. So about nine seconds copy of nine or, or six gigabytes of data. I'm sorry. So nine seconds of six gigabytes data. That's a read and write. That's that's pretty pretty darn impressive. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's make a copy of itself on onto itself. Okay, so this is going to make a copy of it. This is not cut and paste. It's not just going to move it from one folder to another. This is actually going to make a copy of itself onto itself. All right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13. So interestingly enough, to make a copy on itself is actually slower than copying from another M.2. So that's interesting. Still pretty good. 13 seconds of 6 gigabytes of copy. So there you have it, guys. This is the unboxing and review of this external aluminum enclosure for M.2 drives. So if you're wondering now, well, should I get one of these? Well, it depends. If you are one of those people who need external storage that's super fast, then yes, definitely go for it. You can potentially boot over the USB to the operating system as well. Of course, if your computer supports it, and that's one of those things you have to check with the manufacturer of your computer. I wouldn't know that because some of the computers uh, may not support booting off USB. Some of the newer ones do. So, And yes, of course, if you are doing video editing and you want external storage that's really fast, here are the speeds and they speak for themselves. I would definitely recommend it for somebody who does media editing and this and that on the go. This is a definitely a great upgrade for somebody who does media editing, video editing, I should say. And uh, there are links in the description for anything that you might be interested in here, including the drive that I used to test with. So in the link in the description below, there is the aluminum case and there is the Samsung link as well. Now, I do have to say when it comes to copying over a folder that has a combination of files and folders that are of different drives or different sizes and this and that, well, that speed is not going to be the same. When I showed you this copy-paste folder thing, the uh, when you if you were to do it with a folder that has a bunch of different things, like, for example, a video game, and that folder you copy over to this new drive, it's going to take quite a bit longer to do so. What I'm doing here is showing you how fast you can copy a large files in order to test the full speed, full potential speed of it, read and write. Otherwise, here's what happens. If I copy over a folder that, for example, a game folder or a program folder, um, it's similar to driving on the uh, driving a car. So when you're on a highway, when you get on a highway or uh, autobahn, as Germans would say, or a freeway, as some might say, once you start to accelerate, you get to the maximum speed that you can go that's allowed on the highway and then you maintain that speed for a long time. And that's exactly happens with these large files whenever you're copying them over. And that gives a huge boost in performance that is possible with these type of drivers, regardless to whether it's aluminum um, external enclosure or just directly onto your M.2 over PCI Express. 
However, if you have a folder with combination of uh, large files and small files, it's like driving in the city. You have to um, stop and accelerate more frequently because there are small files. So if you have a bunch of small files, you, it has to stop accelerate to the top speed or it may not even get that top speed and then stop again and then do it over and over again which reduces the copy and paste speed by a lot anyways now um, this is just an example of how to get what the maximum speed is to test the maximum speed of this external enclosure um, as a fair comparison otherwise yes you can put your video games on this the loading times are going to be fast i mean this is what you would get you would get read of this so if you have a game that you're loading or this and that these are the reads you will be getting for those of course again like i explained my uh, version of how this works um, it will also depend on the game itself how many large and how many small files there are either way this is a huge upgrade for anybody who wants a faster drive even if you have just a regular in internal drive again numbers heavily depend also on using the proper uh, solid state that you might want to install like the samsung that i've used um, inside of that enclosure that kind of pushes it to its max all right guys thank you so much for watching links in the description for any of this stuff uh, leave a like i'd really appreciate it. if you have any questions i'm here to help you don't be shy so ask me anything and i'll help you i mean these are the numbers this is what you get that's all there is to it all right thank you guys so much have a good day Bye bye Testing the single file performance of the M.2. Copy, paste. And here we go. Oh, oh my God, that is so fast. I didn't even catch how, was it like two seconds or something? That was so fast. All right, all right. Uh, hopefully the other ones do just as well. We'll see though. Hello, my friends. My name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. In today's video, we are doing a real world speed comparison between M.2 solid state drive versus SATA SSD versus hard drive magnetic. So let me just show you. Here is the CPU Z of my system. I have Intel Core i9 9900K. Here is the RAM I have DDR4 that is set to 3200 megahertz speed samsung ssd 840 evo this is an old one i'm not using that one right now for comparison because it's just old and it's not a fair comparison and the regular sol solid state drive that i'm using here is 860 evo by samsung which is 500 gigabytes and then we have samsung ssd um, 970 evo 250 gigabytes which is the m.2 nvme drive and then we got Western Digital, which is just a standard hard drive with 7200 RPM speed. This one is also 500 gigabytes. So let me show you what I'm doing here. On the right hand side, I have Task Manager that is monitoring the performance, the CPU usage. And the reason for the CPU high usage CPU right now is because I'm recording the video as well. But I will also monitor how much RAM we're using and how much actual read and write speeds we have here um, as 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 we are recording the video and as we are benchmarking everything. So here's my setup. I have a copy of Steam folder in each one of these drives. You can tell that this is my operating system as well, which is M.2. So there's a bit of a handicap there, just a little bit, because I'm using it as the operating system. The system itself is using it to process different services that are running in the background at the same time. But it's a copy of a Steam folder, which you can see is 19.5 gigabytes in size. And the reason this, I think, is a fair comparison is because it's a combination of small files and large files, which should prove as a real world comparison. So here's the thing. Um, if you just copy a large file, for example, a video, really large video, uh, chances are that solid state, the M.2, will have a huge advantage of that because the maximum speed that it can reach comparison to regular ones and the same thing for the 860 evo which is a typical solid state drive you would do and you can see it's 19.5 and then we also have the same thing on the uh, the uh, magnetic drive it's not showing the full size okay here we go i'll, I'll show you the full size and it's 19.5 here as well 
and just to prove to you that this is a magnetic one it says that it's d if i go to properties of it it's it's 465 gigabytes which is the the magnetic one and here is the 500 gigabyte solid state one and this one is just a folder on the desktop which is again the operating system all right so let's make a copy to itself which will test the read and write speed of each drive starting first and i will have a timer here to show up and i'll try to time it that might be off by a second but i'm going to execute a timer as well here we go i'm going to make a copy i'm going to paste it in there there you go i'm going to start my timer here so you can roughly see timer is off probably by half a second and i'm going to click on the c drive which is what i'm using right now to record this you can see the read and write speeds below and you can see it goes up quite high because it is m.2 and we'll see the time wise we have roughly 30 seconds that went by to record this it says estimated remaining time is 45 seconds well now it says 60 seconds but we will see this fluctuates because it slows down when it comes to smaller files actually because it doesn't get a chance to ramp up in speed although it is a solid state drive it's funny how this actually remains the same but it's just the way the computers are designed but when you think about you know uh, regular um, drives by the way one minute went by uh, the um, it makes sense for it to have to wait to ramp up and seek because it's spinning it's a magnetic and it has discs and you have to wait for it to ramp up but uh, it kind of persisted, obviously, through the uh, system itself. We can see that we're using only 34 or, or roughly, well, it fluctuates, but we're good on CPU power. We've got plenty of that. RAM remains a little bit higher than what we started with, which is normal. This is just cache stuff in the background. You can see that the disk itself is using, most of the time is using 100% of its capacity, but it does have to spend time to seek and uh, and kind of uh, look up those files at the same time. So we're almost at two minute mark here for the M.2 solid state drive. Again, keep in mind there are background processes also at the same time being used um, at the same time. So two minutes so far. So that would be 124 seconds. 126 seconds if i'm not mistaken stop and i was late there about two seconds so two minutes and let's say eight seconds okay let's make a note of that m.2 two minutes and eight seconds Okie dokie, I'm going to reset that and now I'm going to go for the standard uh, standard uh, solid state which is the 860 EVO by Samsung. Copy pasta. Boom. Alright, here we go. So solid state drive 860 EVO is also a really good drive. It is using SATA, which is um, limited to 600 megabit, megabytes per second. I'm sorry. Maximum speed for SATA 3.0, and which I believe this computer uses. So far, it's doing really well. I, uh, it might be pretty close to the M.2. Keep in mind, again, M.2 is being used by the operating system as well so we know that this is h let's go ahead and click on h so far 40 seconds this is the real time of read and write it has a really good um really good speeds here so if you just want to get regular solid state to improve your speed this is a really good opportunity too and the 860 evo um, is also um, a good good choice when it comes to this you can see that the maximum speeds are not reaching as fast uh, as the M.2 when it comes to high peaks. So this might be actually a pretty close uh, fight here. It does 
help it that there are a lot of small files that it actually has to seek first so there are no really large files to deal with which m.2 would just destroy it in so far a minute and a half minute and we've got it's it's doing really really good i'm i'm really happy with the speed of this 860 evo and uh, so far so good minute wow it actually might beat the m.2 i'm gonna get ready here to stop it all right all right here we go here we go almost two minutes went by there it is two minutes and wow it's actually pretty close remember i was two seconds late on the other one sada let's just do this sada ssd two minutes and three seconds it beat the m.2 when it comes to this type of performance all right let's f check out the uh, magnetic storage going to reset this copy paste there we go that's the magnetic drive and this is not even going to be close we know that the magnetic storage here is d and you can see it's using 100 percent of its power for the most part but it does fluctuate again this is just the way the drives are and the time of completion is going to be a lot longer so in that case i will actually speed past that so you guys can see the final result um in comparison I will get a large file just so you guys can see the difference. As you can see, guys, this has taken a while. So I'm just going to kind of end this when it comes to the Western digital part of it. When it comes to magnetic performance, you can see that it doesn't even stand a chance to anything like this. It's been, uh, let's see, three minutes, over three minutes here, and it's not even halfway down. So we know it's not going to compare at all. What I'm going to do next is do a take a really large file that's just a single large file and see how well it performs in comparison to the two solid state drives to see if it's worth it or not. Here's the test of one single large file, which is just a video, which is about two and a half gigabytes in size. I'm going to do copy pasta. This is the M.2. Uh, just a sec. This is the M.2. Okay, that was really fast, but you can saw you saw that the the speeds just spiked like really high because it could reach that maximum speed with single file. I I didn't even catch how fast that was. I think it was like 2 seconds. Here's the standard SSD. copy pasta okay it's still really fast but about half the speed and you can see that it's noticeable there so that's one large file and then again lastly we have magnetic copy pasta which is not horrible but you can see that it's slowing down quite a bit and the speeds are nowhere near to the solid state drive action so there you have it guys if you like to copy things that are large single files and you want them copied fast then m.2 is for you if you are doing video editing then m.2 NVMe solid state drives are for you. If you're just a regular person that needs to, you know, upgrade from magnetic drive, then just a regular 860 Evo or similar is for you. Especially when it comes to copying folders that are large in size. And I'm not exactly sure 
how much of an effect it has on the M.2 being as the operating system and doing this type of performance test. I am uh, just kind of, you know, putting this together just to kind of compare as it is. But I'm not sure, to be honest. So when it comes to it, interestingly enough, in this comparison speed, the regular solid state beat it by a few seconds when it comes to copying just a large folder. When it comes to loading times, it depends. If, for example, and, and you know, I get this a lot. You know, people ask me mostly about video games. Is it going to load my video game faster? Well, it depends. Does your video game have a lot of large files that it needs to load at once? Then yes, then M.2 might be faster. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty close when it comes to just the regular 860 EVO solid state drive. So there you have it. This is a real world speed comparison between all three types of drives. If you like this video, please share it with friends. Let me know what you think. And there are links in the description for each one of these drives. Have a good day. Bye-bye. I am very, very, very surprised. This is way faster than advertised, guys, especially the write speed. This write speed is supposed to be 2,000. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. This is a Pan Y brand of M.2 solid state drivers, the latest and the greatest. Everybody wants one of these M.2 drives, especially if you have an old computer. You want this. This is fast. This is the best and the greatest. This is XLR8 Gaming and it's 500 gigabytes and I'll tell you exactly why I have 500 gigabytes. It's because I'm comparing it against another brand that's also 500 gigabytes. There's no reason for that except from the fact that the squeakers demanded that on my previous videos you gotta have the same size drive and compare it with that. It has nothing to do with that. The speed is speed. It doesn't matter how big it is. But I digress. We're going to compare 500 versus 500 of a different brand, which is a Samsung 970 Evo. All right, that out of the way. This one is NVMe PCIe Gen 3 times 4. What that means, you got to have either M.2 slot that runs over PCI Express, or you got to have a free PCI Express slot on your computer that's at least four times. You can use eight times or 16 times. So yes, if you don't have an M.2 slot on your motherboard, you can still use this with this thing. This is just an adapter. This is a cheap adapter. You can insert it into this, put it on your computer, and there you have it. You have an M.2 drive. I will link it in the description if you're interested. I'm not saying you should necessarily buy the one I'm using, but check them out. There are definitely better ones. This is the one I got is cheap, but it works. We're going to use that as well. All right. This is 3,500 megabits per second read speeds and the write speed is 2000 megabits not megabytes megabits read write speeds i'm sorry compared to 970 evo plus which is 3500 megabits per second read and it's supposed to also be i think 34 also or 3500 write read as well anyways yes this one is definitely going to be slower when it comes to writing but it's also cheaper drive. We're going to test that. So why would you care about write? That's if you're installing something on your computer or copying something over back and forth. You definitely want the write speed. But if you're just worried about load times, this, your games, your operating system, your Windows updates, all of that, you might want to just look at the read speed mostly. And this is why I'm comparing it to 970 EVO Plus because it has similar read speeds. We're going to test that, guys. Very, very important. Let's do a quick unboxing. We're going to get it to the benchmarking. All right. Let's open it real quick just to show you. Then we're going to install it. And then we're going to look at the benchmarks. Like I said, that's the most important thing. I will show you real quick how to install it as well into this adapter. Here it is. It's not rocket science. Let me do a little focus action for you guys. Here we go. The main thing to worry about is the orientation of this notch. This is an M key type of solid state drive. If you get the one that has two notches, that's the wrong one. That's just SATA. All right. So all I did was just kind of bend it here because it's kind of weird packaging, but it holds it in there. All right. Very easy. Here's our adapter. We're just going to put it in there real quick. These adapters usually come with all the right hardware. All you got to do is just make sure 
it's aligned properly like so let me give you a little close-up action guys you see the notch there's another notch right there there's another notch right there so you just make sure that's aligned put it on an angle like this put it on an angle you see how it kind of stays there like that this is how laptop memory is installed as well so make sure you put it on an angle like this first insert it like that and all we're gonna do is just lower it and screw it down okay and here we have the little screw action and we're just gonna screw it on there ah guys I hate these little tiny screws I'm trying to film this and I'm standing behind the camera at the same time holy moly guacamole alright it's not rocket science guys there it is just a little tight action and that's that's it right there and then if you get one of the adapters that has a heat sink on there make sure you put the heat sink on there this one didn't come with a heat sink that's what I'm saying you don't necessarily have to buy this one I'll link it so you can just check it out just check it out don't buy it necessarily you can I don't care um, it's cheap but see if you can get one that has a heat sink that you put over it you just kinda insert it over here and then you put the C heat sink on because these things can't get hot you know I'm just trying to do you a favor and tell you right away it's get hot alright guys let's benchmark it alright guys here we are inside of my computer uh, let's just see for a reference what kind of processor I have so make sure that there's no bottleneck going on here's my i9-9900K and uh, let me show you the disk drives the first one is 970 EVO plus it shows up like that when you install Samsung drivers which is normal but it does say NVMe so we know it's that one and then we got PNY which is the one we just talked about this is the one we just installed it's a CS3030 uh, if you remember looking at the box it said 3030 so if you want to confirm that you can certainly do so and of course I have a couple more drives in here which is just a regular 860 EVO solid state drive and then a regular standard 970 EVO IM.2 which is not the one we're testing we're going to test the first two here all right this is how they look like inside of my computer this is the Samsung 970 EVO plus and here is the one we just installed PNY here it is same thing essentially capacity is 465 gigabytes when it comes down to it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these folders inside of EVO plus and I'm going to put them inside PNY and I'm going to test it with stuff inside of that you know how many co comments I've seen on my previous videos when I did this type of comparison when squeakers tell me that I am not doing this right you can't have anything in there you can't test the one that has stuff in it because it's slower like really do you want do you calculate the speed of a drive when there is nothing in it do you want your drive to be fastest and when there is nothing in it this is why I'm going to test it with stuff in it alright guys so here we are we're definitely going to do a crystal disk we're gonna do a benchmark but I want to show you what I did here as a preparation for a real-world example and the first thing I did was actually make sure I'm recording with the camera outside of the computer if I use screen recording software that's actually going to impair the results meaning it's gonna change things it's gonna slow it down and they're not gonna be accurate results so I want to make sure that that's not happening so what we're going to do we're going to do a quick test of copying to itself here's the 970 EVO plus we're going to do copy paste so what it's going to do is going to create same folders and file we're going to do a side by side all right so far it's it peaked up and you can see that it slows down whenever it's reading smaller files let me just do it right here it's whenever it's reading smaller files it slows down again like I talked about before and whenever it hits a large file like these mp4s it gets up to that speed but it copies them so quickly that it doesn't even have time to hit ramp up to the speeds that was very impressive alright now let's do the same thing on the PNY we're gonna do a copy paste onto itself again guys this is make it a copy onto itself we're gonna do a side by side it peaked up just like the other one interestingly enough and but it slowed down it noticeably slower but the speeds are still pretty good I mean considering that the read and or the, the read and write is supposed to be slower well the read is supposed to be the same I'm sorry but the write is supposed to be slow 
I like that the consistency here, it's very similar to 907 EVO, also very fast. These numbers are impressive. Okay, so technically speaking, I think, and I'm going to do a side by, again, we looked at the side by side here as well. Look, look, while I'm talking, we're going to do a side by side. And I think 970 EVO noticeably won, but this Pay and Y is actually 20 bucks less. So it's $20 less. Now, if we are going to, if you're going to get a one terabyte or a larger, let's say you get one terabyte, we're talking $40 less. So if you're buying a larger, uh, if you want a larger hard drive storage, then you might want to consider PNY if you want to save money. $40 is quite a bit of money for most people. But if you don't care about that, and you or you're buying a 500 gigabyte, then you might as well get the Samsung 970 EVO, especially for the operating system. Now I want to talk about operating system real quick. If you don't have a built-in M.2 slot, chances are your computer is not going to support it. I will show you on this screen what's required. You got to have NVMe support, and uh, you got to be able to have these specific settings. Generally speaking, you cannot boot unless your computer BIOS support it and you, you already have an M.2 built in. Otherwise, if you're putting it as an adapter, it's most likely just going to be as storage, okay? Which is also great for like if you're loading games on it, if you're doing some productivity work, like video editing, some kind of file transfer storage, it's great for that, you know? Operating system, the main benefit from have, for having an M.2 as an operating system is to boot up and how often do you actually boot up the computer and for the updates. But you get similar results with just a regular SSD and I've actually talked about this in my other videos. There's a comparison video that I've done as well if you want to check that out. Alright guys, let's now do the crystal disk. We're going to do, let's see, which is our Evo? E, local disk E. We're going to leave everything at default. I just did a fresh install of Crystal Disk. We're going to leave everything at default. I'm going to run it and I'm going to come back with the results for the 907 EVO Plus, I should say. Not just the regular 9. This is 907 EVO Plus. Because I know it takes a while. I'm just going to come back with the results and so you guys can see them. All right, guys. So the results are coming in. This is for 970 EVO Plus. You can see the numbers right now and that are... 3.5 gigabits per second read or 3,578 megabits per second and then we got the write speed of 3,279 which if I did a test again it would probably on average be 3,300 which is pretty respectful uh, re re respectful respectful I uh, sure why not why the hell not might as well be respectful I respect these speeds guys this is pretty good. It's pretty close to what the advertisement is. These things will fluctuate up and down. I mean, this is just the nature of things. But generally speaking, we got 3.5 gigabits per second, if you will. And then we got 3.3 around it of gigabits per second for the write speeds. So these are the numbers for 970 EVO+. Plus. All right, so the other one is letter D for the drive. Here it is, we're going to do the same testing here. I'm gonna come back to you once we are close to finish. All right guys, so the numbers are coming in for the PNY drive. I am very, very, very surprised. This is way faster than advertised, guys, especially the write speed. This write speed is supposed to be 2,000. And look at this, it's 2,434 per second for the writing. Wow, talking about being better than advertised. We got the read speeds of 3.2. It's about
So you bought a new laptop or a desktop and you've been told that you have an M.2 drive. Yes, you do. But is it really a good M.2 drive? For example, this is one that came from my gaming laptop. And look what it says here. It's serial ATA. So this M.2 is actually running over serial ATA connection. Hello friends, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobuman. Here's the situation. A couple of years ago, I bought a gaming laptop. I thought that gaming laptop had an M.2 drive. As you can see on this box here, it actually does say PCIe super fast, blah, 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 blah. Well, now, since two years has gone by, now I needed to add more storage. So I decided to take it out and see what's going on. And then I realized that the drive that was inside wasn't actually a standard M.2 drive. It's actually SATA drive. And I couldn't believe it because the drive itself looks just like an M.2 drive. In this video, I'm going to show you how it looks like uh, in BIOS and how the benchmarks are showing up as well. So that way you can tell the difference yourself and also the physical difference of the drive. So let's have a look. I'm kind of disappointed that this laptop was supposed to be gaming didn't actually come with an actual PCIe uh, drive, but I digress. We're going to install a new one and we're going to compare the benchmarks as well. Let's have a look. By the way, if you got one second to click the like button, it really makes a big difference for me. I really appreciate it. It only takes one second. Thank you guys so much. So you bought a new laptop or a desktop and you've been told that you have an M.2 drive. Yes, you do. But is it really a good M.2 drive? For example, this is one that came from my gaming laptop. And look what it says here. It's serial ATA. So this M.2 is actually running over serial ATA connection. The way you can tell also is by having two notches on this M.2 slot, M.2 drive. The regular M.2 drive that runs over PCIe only has one notch and it's a whole lot faster. I guarantee you that. I will show you benchmarks from the beginning on my laptop using this one. And then I will show you benchmarks on the new one that I installed, which is going to be a massive upgrade. Unbelievable. Make sure you do have the proper PCIe M.2 drive. Otherwise, you're just running over SATA. It's no different from just a regular solid state drive. It's no different from regular solid state drive. Trust me on this. So in BIOS, this is how it looks like now. It shows as serial ATA for the one over there. You see that? That's the one that's currently inside of it and it's under serial. You'll see whenever I install the new one, it's going to show it underneath here. I guarantee it. Just stick around and you'll see. Okay, so here's a test before installing the new updated M.2 drive. You can tell that I am plugged in with power here and that you can see that as well by the little plug-in icon there on the battery. And you can see here that I have set it to performance mode on my laptop just to make sure that everything is done correctly. 8 gigabyte file size, 5 tests, and you can see there's 50%, uh, roughly 50% of the hard drive used right now that is currently installed on this computer. So we're going to run all of these. I'm going to run it like this. I may speed it up a little bit uh, just because it can take a while to do these tests. But I, wanted to, I really wanted to make sure that you guys can see the uh, performance monitor here that the usage is only 16%. The memory is 16 gigabytes. There's only 3.3 used uh, used by right now from the system. And you can see the disk usage is 100%, which makes sense. We're testing the disk usage and there's nothing else. There's no other activity going on. So all the CPU usage is right now used by the uh, crystal disk for purpose of testing. I mean, pretty much right away, you can see why you would might want to upgrade to something faster. Yeah, these are really good speeds, but these are the type of speeds you will get from just a regular SATA, uh, which runs, uh, SATA 3 runs at 600 megabytes per second. You can get cheaper ones. There are M.2s, just like this one, they're gonna be slow. So this is an entry level, low end M.2 that's inside of this laptop. The one we're going to install is high end and it's going to be, you know, five to six, maybe even seven times faster than this. So this is going. This is a cheap one in here, and we're going to be installing this one, which is uh, 2280 in length. So make sure that you do get the right length as well. 
and it's going to go in like this. You can see they are exactly the same size and this is just real quick. It's 970 EVO plus pretty much the best you can get right now. Link in the description if you're interested. It's around 100 bucks. Price varies but it's about right. If you do use the link I really appreciate it because I do get uh, commission on that. So thank you so much. Alright, so it's very simple here. We're just going to unscrew it here and what's going to happen is this is going to go up by itself. It's going to come up because there's a lever on it. A little bit tight but I'm going to try to put my keep my hands away so you guys can see it happen. So once this screw comes up it will just probably kind of pop up because it's on an angle. Huh? Maybe the, make sure you don't lose the screw because we're going to reuse it. So if I touch it here it's probably going to pop up. Oh, it looks like there's it's stuck. Okay, so there's adhesive underneath this one here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let me see. I'm going to get some pointing. This one is actually stuck to the motherboard. Uh, right there. Right underneath. Do you see that? This one is actually glued on there. That's okay. I'm just going to lift it like this. Because I know it actually goes this way. So just take your time, never yank on anything. It's, it's going to come loose. I know it, it's inserted like this. You see how it pops up like that? There you go. So now, if you pay attention here, this is how it's inserted. I'm just going to pull it out like that. You see how there's an angle there? And we're just going to put it in like this. Make sure the notch is matching right there. And we're going to put it in like this. Push it in until the copper connectors are gone and I'm just gonna lower it here real quick I'm gonna use that padding there actually that sticky pad to my advantage here usually you would have to keep it down while you screw it on am I getting this right here we go yep I had to adjust it because I can't I wasn't sure if I actually had it in in focus alright so it's there and then we're just gonna use this in reverse we're going to install it so gently I'm going to screw this back on and in case I haven't mentioned it you can't boot to OS unless your computer supports it. So if you have a question and wondering if you can boot to OS, yes this one can boot to OS obviously. I don't have any other drives installed. Uh, but if you're installing like an adapter or something in your computer, your computer may not boot, support booting to OS. Usually like older computers do not. So you know just keep that in mind. If you have an old computer chances are it's not going to boot. Um, if you add an adapter with the M.2 uh, drive capability. Alright, let's have a look to see what's going on inside of BIOS. These are the current, this is what BIOS sees right now. And imagine, uh, imagine, <laughs> yes I imagine. Remember how I told you that this one is actually serial ATA? And it does say there it's serial ATA. This one it actually comes up as PCIe SSD. 500 gigabytes Samsung SSD um, 970 Evo 500 gigabytes. So this is what shows up now. That's weird that we've upgraded from the serial one to PCI one. We're going to install operating system on this, and then we're going to see the benchmark. All right. First thing first, I wanted to show you something important. You want to make sure that your BIOS is set to UEFI. So these type of drives support that. If you're set to legacy, it's not going to work. Legacy is basically means like old school type of hard drives. You know what I mean? Or old, I should say old school type of booting. Uh, essentially SATA. So you want to make sure that UFI uh, is enabled. So now I should be able to install fresh Windows 10 on it. Give it a sec. Give it a sec here, guys. Give it a sec. 
It's almost there. It's almost there. All right. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I sound like, uh, <laughs> here we go. I was going to say I sound like uh, Elvis, but I probably don't. Elvis Presley. There it is. Cortana. I'm Cortana. No, How Cortana. No, come on, Cortana. Sign in here, attach a Wi-Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. How do I get an exit out of this? Use your voice or the keyboard along the way. Come on, Cortana. And if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. Yes. I hate you, Cortana. This is so stupid. Oh, look, of course it's gonna... No. Mm. Decline. Um, oh my, look at all this crap. Now look at all this crap. I wasn't going to talk smack about them, but look at all this crap. All of that stuff is, is spying on you and trying to advertise to you and trying to sell you their service. I understand you got to have a business, but man, this is too much. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. My God. It really ruined my day, this, this, this crap. Hopefully the benchmark of this. And I'm, I guarantee you, I will disable all of that stuff. I just don't have time to show you guys this right now. But I'll disable all of those services. All right. This is insanely ridiculous. All right, I'm going to do... Okay, airplane mode is on. 1% CPU usage. That's good enough. All right, the moment of truth, guys. I'm going to we're we're going to test this bad boy now. Remember, we had like 540 here, and it was around 500 there. Oh my God, did you see that? Oh my God, look how fast that is. That is sick. How many times is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Seven times faster almost seven times faster than the other one. Seven times faster than, where is this? Seven times faster than that. That's the read speed. Write speed should be pretty impressive. Should be pretty impressive. As soon as we get to it. I'm gonna leave it like this. And we can watch the, the, the happenings. I can't believe how much time I wasted installing and configuring Microsoft that forces you to install your own, that, they, that forces you to use their own online account. From a business standpoint, I get it. But from like functional standpoint, it's ridiculous. I don't want everything to be on the cloud. I want things to be locally, installed locally. Man, look at those speeds, man. Look at that. That is pretty crazy, man. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. By the way, you don't necessarily have to buy a Samsung. You know, this is, this is the rated speed for this Samsung that we installed, the 970 EVO Plus. You can buy other brands too. You can buy like a mid-range one if you want to, if you can't afford a Samsung one, you know. But either way this is going over PCIe it's going it's a huge huge difference over than the SATA and uh, it, it goes to show how you can buy a computer that states that it has M.2 on it and this and that but we this is proof right here that it's not I mean how much evidence do you want I've given you all the evidence you, you have that, that you can you can get about this why they even made this over SATA? I don't even know. I don't even know. Why? This is ridiculous. Look at the write speed. Oh my god. Seven times. Seven times faster. Seven times. That's crazy, man. Almost seven times. But, I mean, look at the difference between 400. 50, 60, whatever it was, write speed to 3,247. Man, what an upgrade. What an upgrade. I'm just going to wait for it to show up this second number and maybe even a third one. But that, 
that pretty much completes it guys if you have a second please please click the like button and please use the links in the description I really appreciate it it does give me a commission and that's the best way to show your appreciation to me honestly just click on the link what do you got to lose all it does is just gives me like a percentage of the sale it's not like a markup for you all it does is just you click second one second and you, you lose nothing but you do me a favor you, you, throw a couple, you throw a couple of bucks to me it's like the same thing as when people use those super chats whenever somebody's live streaming except you don't pay nothing you don't pay nothing extra it's just that the, in this case Amazon is gonna throw a couple of dial, dollars my way for a referral that's all there is and you're doing me a huge favor man thanks so much and there we go those are the numbers I hope you have a wonderful day this is very educational not just for me hopefully for you as well if you have any questions feel free to ask I'll be glad I'll be glad to answer them alright guys take care bye bye place the file in destination Oof, that was so fast and that's going from regular SSD to the newest one so that was over 350 megabytes per second write and read speed and now I'm gonna copy to itself so this is the newest one we're gonna copy and make a copy of a file to itself so this is going to be read and write speed combined to itself oh my god that was insanely fast hello everyone my name is Irvin also known as Kobo Man in today's video I will show you how to upgrade your computer to the latest M.2 type of solid state drive so that way we have the, the latest and the fastest and the greatest performance ever when it comes to hard drives right so this is the best one this is the current one 970 EVO NVMe M.2 with the VNAND SSD which is the new type of memory that they switched over from a standard solid state drives a type of memory that it's used anyways without boring you too much here's a problem a lot of times we want the best but we don't necessarily want to spend a whole lot of money on buying a new computer and we want to install one of these and this is what they look like this is one of these M.2 solid state drives and the problem comes when we try to install it into our computer that is few years old chances are it will not have this type of slot which it has these two types of notches so let's open it up this is a HP 800 G2 type of computer so let's say you have one of these or something like it or anything that is you know a little bit older it's not going to have a place for you to put this it's simply not so if you look here where where can you put this doesn't go there definitely not there this is our PCI Express 16 time slot chances are we're gonna have a video card here so that's out of the question these two are PCI Express times two I believe times one I'm sorry these are times one and the next available thing we have is PCI Express times four which is this white one so you know either way we can't there's no place to put this they, where, what can we do about that well we can buy an adapter that we can use to plug in our solid state drive that is the fastest right so an option to that is so one option that we have is to buy one of these adapters this one is by Ventac and there will be a link in the description box just to make sure you guys buy the correct one thank you very much if you do buy one and this one is an adapter for M.2 and VME plus and also has a SATA M.2 SATA SSD and it goes inside of PCI Express times four so as I mentioned earlier we just want to make sure that we have one of these white slots which is PCI Express times four so this is perfect we have it free now we can install our adapter it is crucial to make sure you buy the correct one so I will link you the proper one 
inside the box we have our adapter. Now you can see that there is a slot for our hard drive. Now we can insert our hard drive and the way we would do that is by inserting it as so. Just a sec, I will zoom in so you guys can see this properly. Now we have a place for our hard drive. There is a little slot that matches just like so and then we can now insert it precisely like this, a little bit on an angle, sort of like memory in a laptop. So it goes in on an angle and you gently push it in to make sure that the little copper connectors are no longer visible and then we simply lower it. It's going to be a little bit, a little bit of spring action but we do have a little hole here which we are going to use a screw and a washer to attach. It's super simple. They come with the package. By the way, the package for this adapter also comes with this really nice screwdriver so you don't actually have to have your own. So it, it is a tool you need but you don't actually have to have one because it does come with it. It's very surprising. I've never seen an adapter which only costs about $15 that came with a screwdriver. And it came with screw and a washer which are these. I'm going to try to angle as properly as I can. See how this a uh, gold color one has a little, it's a little bit different and it goes underneath here. So if you have a same type of drive, which I will link in the description box, you can use this washer, insert it from underneath, as so, and just kind of hold it with your index finger or whichever finger you prefer. Now we're going to use this screw to attach it and we're going to use our screwdriver that came with the adapter and then we're going to screw it in ah good thing it's magnetic otherwise I would have lost it by now doesn't help that I had quite a bit of coffee this morning so I'm a bit shaky ah come on I promise you it's not this difficult it's just that I'm clumsy there it is. Okay, so once you get it caught like that, I'm trying to get you a little good angle here. Just gently screw it in. You don't have to force nothing. No, you know, you don't need a lot of, just very gently. As soon as you feel it's tightening, you're done. You know, so now it's just, it's not going anywhere. Uh, by the way, this, I have attached uh, a plate, back plate for a low profile computer which is this one so it will come by default with a regular standard size plate for a regular computer for a regular size desktop right for like a mid tower or something like that it does come with a low profile adapter which is great because my 800G1 is a low profile computer so I went ahead and attached that I did notice about this adapter that this is actually a little bit long it could be that my case is a little bit bent but I left it a little bit loose here, right? So it's not a big deal. So I just left it a little bit loose to make it easier for me to actually install this drive. So just slightly loose as long as it's in there and it has a little bit of room. Because for me, it was a little bit difficult to align this with the PCX Plus slot times four. And of course, you have a room for another drive which is used for the SATA. So if you connect the SATA, you can connect the drive here. This is what this is for. This one is specifically used from PCI Express times 4 which is uh, should be quite a bit and should be a lot faster than just a regular SATA, right? Okay, now that we have this connected, I'm going to insert it into our PCI Express times 4. Of course, always be gentle with installing these. There's a little gap underneath here I hope you can see it. I will try to kind of lift it up. There's a little gap underneath every time you install a card that you have to make sure that this part goes inside of. And ahead of time I removed the little just the protective back plate that used to be here and now I'm going to insert this as so. So again be gentle, take your time. You know all, all computers are different 
In generally speaking, all computers will have one of these white slots, which is what you need. Then I'm just going to align it. Once I know it's aligned properly, I'm just going to push it down. And there it goes. The way you know it's pushed in all the way is that you don't see any copper connectors. Now you're good to go. And I'm going to close this up. I'm going to connect this just in case, although I'm not using the slot for the SATA connector, but I'm going to connect it anyways, just in case I decide to use it for something later. That's that. And with that being installed, I'm going to put my cover back on. I'm going to go to my computer and show you what you need to do next after this. Ideally speaking, this should just show up as a drive on your computer and then all you got to do is just format it, which I will show you real quick too, it's no big deal. But if you were trying to use it as a boot drive, you can certainly do so. Depending on your computer, you may have to go to BIOS and make some changes in there for it to show up properly. Maybe not. But just keep that in mind. If, you can, if you're trying to install OS on it on a fresh computer and you don't see it, make sure you go inside of BIOS and make appropriate changes. Okay, let's go to our computer and see. So with the hardware installed itself and with the computer turned on, what is the first thing we're going to check? Well, obviously we're going to check to see if our drive shows up. As you may have noticed, my computer here has two drives installed. And to see if the third one is installed, we're going to go to this PC. And unfortunately, our drive doesn't show up. Well, why is that? As I mentioned earlier, we will have to format the drive in order to show up. If we want to get a little bit more technical to make sure that our adapter that we've installed for our drive is installed properly, we can check that first. So let's do that real quick and then we're going to go and format our drive and set it up properly so it actually shows up. And the way you do that is through the device manager. So if you have, you know, Windows 10, you can just type in device, device manager, go through that. Or alternatively, you can just type in, you know, my computer, which is old way of saying uh, this PC uh, on Windows 7, but it's this PC on Windows 10. So once you have that, you may have an icon on your desktop as well. You can just right click it, select properties. And then from there, you can access Device Manager. So let's open up our Device Manager and see if there are any errors. You know, we would expect to be some errors because our drive is not showing up, but they're not because everything's actually correct. We just have to do a little bit configuration. So in order to see if our um, NVAM uh, driver controller has been installed, we're going to go to Storage Controllers. We're going to expand that to see. And then we can, at the bottom, see that we do have indeed standard NVM Express controller installed. These other two are for our SATA loopback controller, storage space controller and VHD loopback controller. We don't have to worry about that. At this point, we do want to make sure that this here is installed without any issues. This indicates to us that the adapter works perfectly. So this is all good. So now let's go format our drive so that way we can see it. The one, one way to do that is through our manage options. And this is find again with this PC or my computer and then going to right click it. And then we're going to manage our storage from there. Uh, not to confuse you, we're just going to right click on this PC, my computer, or whatever it is that you have. And then we're going to select manage, which is right here. We're going to select manage. And then we're going to look for storage, which is right here. And then we're going to look for disk management because we know that we've installed a disk or this is an old way of saying, you know, hard drive, but because it's actually no longer a disk. It's actually kind of funny, but this is where it's going to be. So we're going to select that and we're going to see what happens. And 
the system has found our drive immediately and it's asking us what kind of style of partition do we want and this is where we can tell it to create a master boot record type of partition on this PCI Express M.2 slot drive but you know so you can select that if you want and click OK and then it's going to create a type of partition for a boot type of partition um, for that I will go ahead and, and leave it at GPT and uh, it's a new type of partition that is not recognized by a previous version of Windows so Windows 7 will not have this option whatsoever so I'm going to click OK and now we have our partition here which hasn't been allocated so basically what this does is tells we, we tell the computer how much of the storage we want to use because if we go back here to our computer here we can still see I'm going to refresh this it's still not showing up because all it is is just a partition it hasn't been allocated in the sense where we need to tell the computer how much of it do we want to use and we want to use all of it why not why would we want to not use all of it so we're going to right click it here we know this is our drive um, you know and uh, we're going to select new simple volume and this is self-explanatory we're just going to click next on this wizard we're going to leave it at default and we're just going to click next again here you can change the letter if you really want to I will change it I will just leave it at E to make it simple and uh, there are other things you can do but for right now we're just you know installing this drive so that we can use it um, if you are interested in a lot of other IT stuff or computer related stuff that go into detail about this stuff um, you know you can certainly go through my channel I have a lot of videos like that then we're going to click next and I'm going to format it I'm going to leave it NTFS uh, you know because you know it's internal we, we're not going to use anything else so leave everything at default you can label it as something else in my case I'm going to be using this as a scratch drive for my video editor because it's fast Adobe catch so I'm going to call it that and I'm going to perform a quick format <clears throat> And I'm going to click next and then finish just to confirm that everything is what I want and as you can see it appeared immediately here and now we're going to go inside of it so every time you uh, you know partition a drive and then after you format it it actually is less of actual um, storage if you will you guys probably know this already if a drive is 256 gigabytes after you format it it actually goes down to 232 uh, there's an explanation that anyways I'm not gonna bug you about the technical aspects of this we're just gonna see how fast it is so this is our regular standard drive this is magnetic drive this is not even a solid state this one is solid state so we're, let's go do a quick test to see why you would even want to do this 